I'm Michael, here today to share some information about Fedora Linux. Fedora Linux was created by Red Hat of North Carolina. They were acquired by IBM in 2018 for about $34 billion and some change. And Fedora Linux is an alternative way to run your computer for everyday tasks. Red Hat is industrial grade technology used by major Fortune 500 companies to run major systems that um, help with banking and finance, commerce, and shopping. So when you go to major websites, mainly from big tech companies, Red Hat is at the uh, cornerstone, at the foundation of what makes those companies go. So with Fedora, you end up with an industrial grade platform and backbone but that's easy to use and accessible for everyday tasks such as surfing the web, editing documents, and watching photos. So whether you're into streaming videos or playing online games, downloading photos and pictures and sharing them with friends, as well as participating in social media, Fedora is the platform to go to enable that. That said, I'm going to show you how to use Fedora, get it installed, even if you're starting from Windows. And what you'll find with Fedora is that you have a system that's less susceptible to malware and viruses, that is very unlikely to crash, so it stays up for a longer period of time, and you don't have to tune it to the extent that you do other systems and once you see how easy it is to install then you can make the choice to select Fedora and have more control over your computer. Fedora is based on Linux which is a standard in the computer industry. Linux is maintained by not one company, but many companies, universities, research institutions, and governments around the world. So Linux as a fundamental part of computing is a system that understands how your computer works. Fedora then puts a nice layer on top of that to make it easy to use and accessible to everyday uh, uses and tasks. So I'm actually going to use a USB-C flash drive. This flash drive has a traditional USB type A on one side and USB-C on the other side so it can do uh, both types. So USB-C is a faster, it's a newer faster transfer uh, method for computers and this is going to allow us to install uh, Fedora Linux a little faster. Start with the folder icon on the taskbar. Open to this PC to see a list of drives. A blank USB drive should be among the drives listed. Next, we have the Downloads folder. The Downloads folder is where our Fedora Media Writer and an ISO file will be placed. And we're going to do this by opening up Firefox and going to fedoraproject.org. 
when we go to fedoraproject.org it's going to redirect to another website called getfedora.org and you can do this by opening Firefox and in the address bar just type fedoraproject.org press enter and then it will go to the website uh, listed above and on the main screen on getfedora.org you have two options the option that we're going to choose is on the left Fedora workstation click the download button and that's going to take you to a page that shows you two options on the right side we have the option to download an ISO file the ISO file is the actual install file for Fedora and I'm going to download that so that if something goes wrong trying to create a USB flash drive I don't have to download the file again then on the left side is Fedora Media Writer with an option for Windows and Mac I'm going to choose the Windows option and once I have that downloaded I can install it and use it to take the ISO file and burn it to a USB flash drive Now that Fedora Media Writer and the ISO file are downloaded, let's take a look at these files. So both files are in the downloads folder. So I have Fedora Media Writer and the ISO file. And you'll notice that the ISO file is um, a 1.8 gigabyte file at this point and depending on which version of Fedora you get the file size can vary Fedora Media Writer when you try to install it Windows prompts you for permission and so we grant permission and we move along <coughs> and so with that we have Fedora Media Writer installed. So we're going to start with running Fedora Media Writer. Now that Fedora Media Writer is open, we see various options for installing uh, Fedora to a flash drive. I'm going to choose the custom image option which will allow me to select the ISO file downloaded earlier. Fedora Media Writer is very handy for creating bootable USB drives. And so I select the ISO file and a window pops up and it shows me the ISO file that I selected and it has detected the blank USB flash drive. So now I am burning it to the uh, USB flash drive and when it does this it's going to put the um, ISO file information onto the USB flash drive 
at just in just the right sequence so that the ISO file can boot from the computer and do so in a way very similar to the way the computer boots off of an internal hard drive and this is important because uh, doing it this way is the only way to get it to work right and then once it finishes burning it you just close it out once you close it out um, you can exit out of Fedora Media Writer altogether or play around with some of the other options so when we go back to um, this PC like we did in the beginning you're going to notice that the USB flash drive is now disappeared and that's, all, that's good because Windows now cannot recognize uh, the, piece, the USB flash drive so we're going to shut down and get ready for the next part now that the USB drive has been created I am going to power down the computer and then get ready to power it back up as I power it back up I'm going to press the escape key on my computer the escape key brings up a special menu that allows me to select a USB flash drive and selecting a USB flash drive allows me to boot Fedora Linux from this flash drive on your computer, the key you would press could be the escape key, the delete key, or the F1 key. If you Google search your computer's model number, Google will normally um, tell you what key you press in order to get the special menu. And the flash drive that I'm actually using has a USB Type A connection, but I can also flip over to USB-C. USB-C is an update to USB that will make my Fedora Linux experience a little smoother. The USB flash drive is detached and I'm going to insert it into the computer and then once, it, once I am sure it's fully inserted because that's important, a partially um, inserted drive isn't going to work. I power on the computer and as it powers on I quickly press the escape key on my computer. It could be a different key on your computer. Um, I know that some computers use the escape key, others use um, F1, others use delete. So this boot option comes up and I get to select the flash drive and I press enter and I have a menu the first option is to start Fedora workstation live and so I select that option and I press enter once I, I do that the computer is um, running code off of the USB flash drive to start up a system very similar to Windows in terms of how it functions and the long scroll of text um, that's very typical of Linux installations when they first start up and this is kinda how that looks and so once that long scroll of text finishes you now have a operating environment in this case you are presented with two options on the left you can try out Fedora or if you know you're going to install it choose the option on the right I'm going to choose the option on the left and try out Fedora and take it for a spin
you'll notice that in this environment we have our menu at the top and in the top left is activities you hover your mouse over there click and you'll see a few icons and then a icon with uh, six dots on it you click on that and that expands out to more icons that you can view and these icons represent programs here's LibreOffice Writer it's a program similar to Microsoft Word and it allows you to create documents and so that's how it looks and it's a pretty useful and versatile program I use all the time that was an example of running Fedora Linux from a USB flash drive no changes were made to the computer and in this environment I was able to surf the web and edit a document very simple straightforward stuff not much to it pretty easy anyone can do it you don't have to be a computer expert to run Fedora Linux next I'm going to install Fedora Linux to my hard drive because I've chosen Fedora Linux as the operating system I want to run you have that option but a fair word of warning do not install Fedora Linux unless you are prepared for it to fully replace Microsoft Windows so it's perfectly okay to run it from a USB flash drive but do not install it on a computer unless you are prepared to replace Microsoft Windows or what other operating system you may already have installed so for me I've made that choice and the rest of this um, process will demonstrate what that looks like ready to install so am I click activities and about four icons down click install Fedora to the hard drive a window pops up the Anaconda installation window that's what it's called and you choose your language once you've determined what language you want to operate uh, in then you click continue the first choice you need to make is your time zone and so a map appears and you choose the area on the map that represents the time zone you normally operate within click done and your option is saved the next is the installation destination the installation destination presents um, s several options but all you really have to do is click the done button once you're in this screen now when you press done another window pops up to confirm where you want to install you simply um, click reclaim space okay when you press that button then a another screen appears where you simply select delete all and once you do that you then um, say reclaim space again so reclaim space delete all and then reclaim space and then click done once you've chosen those options you are ready to proceed to the next step and you simply click begin installation in the lower right hand corner and this is kind of how it looks like when it's starting the install and the install will proceed for for a good bit um, about 10 minutes 20 minutes or so and once it gets to the end 
you have the option in the lower right hand corner um, press quit and the installer ends and then you shut down the computer so with the computer shut down um, the next step is to remove the flash drive after the computer is fully powered off Four, <coughs> remove the USB flash drive <coughs> so now I'm going to power on the computer and after some time a screen comes up and this is the second sequence of the install the end result which is to establish your username and password and so I toggle off uh, some of the uh, privacy settings and then next um, I'm prompted about online accounts which I have none at this time that I want to sync up the username and password it's uh, vital that you take time to um, determine what that's going to be. It could be a very short um, name or it could be um, an avatar that you uh, select. Password, make sure it's something that you can remember. Take your time um, thinking through your password and um, as you enter it, Fedora is going to give you some indication of whether or not the password in its judgment is a secure password selection. Once you choose that password and you click next, Fedora setup is now officially done. And you're actually logged in to your Fedora desktop at this point there's a get started um, screen that provides information on how to use uh, the GNOME desktop in Fedora and I'm going to reboot the computer in a minute but before I do uh, let's take a look at some of the icons they're actually the same as what we saw when we when we were running from the USB flash drive and this one is LibreOffice Calc, a program similar to Microsoft Excel. And when you click on the six dots under activities, you can drill down into other icon groups. And here, these are icons that show programs um, for tuning the computer a bit the file browser allows you to um, organize files and keep up with photos and documents but I'm going to restart and the benefit of doing that is to make sure that my username and password choice was valid and that I actually remember the username and password I just entered. So sometimes um, it's easy to forget a username and password you just entered. So I right click on the desktop and I choose change background. And I have a few backgrounds that are pre installed with Fedora Linux. And so I change the background and I can also change the background of the lock screen the screen where I enter my username and password I can change the background of that as well and so here I made those modifications and on the left side of that setting screen I can look at uh, things like battery uh, screen brightness change that according to my uh, power uh, save and, and, and power use requirements. Under activities I open up Firefox and after I do that I'm going to go right back and close Firefox and then open it again. Basically I wanted to get Firefox running the first time and then when I open it a second time 
um, I'm going to the official start page on this version of Firefox. If you're familiar with Firefox, you can change that, right? So you can go into the preferences in Firefox and change the home page you would like to start up with. So I went to Wikipedia and I did a search for rice, which is a very uh, common uh, food across the world. And here's a regular web page. I'm scrolling the web page. Um, clicked on an image everything works the way you expect and I have multiple tabs so I can do tab browsing um, that's um, pretty pretty straightforward I can also install extensions so next let's take a look at the software center the software center is just like the Google Play Store and other app stores that you may be familiar with and it serves the same function that it allows us to um, check on updates and in this case I can toggle uh, automatic updates so by default software center handles your automatic updates I'm going to go back into software center um, a little bit later um, it's a good idea to open it up um, at least once and then when you open it up a second time after you reboot it's going to fully initialize it with the catalog but here I've opened a program called disk usage analyzer and it's going to show me how much space I'm using on the computer and so it allows me to drill down and see which files or folders is taking up the most space and shows me the relative uh, amount of space a file or folder is taking up um, relative to the system overall so now I'm going to restart and um, this is going to assist with um, initializing the functionality of the system so now I've restarted and I'm going to open up Software Center. The uh, screen you see, it's downloading an additional uh, set of uh, catalogs for programs that could be installed on this, pro on this computer. And so as it goes through that, it's finding the latest updates and all the latest information about the programs. And when you look at the various tabs in the software center, uh, they update with the number of updates that are available. So when I click on that, basically, I'm able to see um, if there are any updates. I'm actually going to click on audio and video. And in that section, I have many choices for playing video watching movies, uh, playing sound, playing CDs, playing mp3s, and, and the like. So the software catalog is very extensive. Um, in Office and Productivity we have numerous programs. So I am in Updates, the Updates tab. And the Updates tab shows you available updates and you can take your time choosing the updates and when you want to install them. Time to conclude our look at the software center and review other aspects of Fedora Linux. The GNOME desktop environment within Fedora offers quite a bit of functionality in terms of everyday use. We have files and folders that we can browse. In this case is a PDF. So I'm going to open this PDF document and it opens in a PDF reader that's installed on Fedora. And this PDF reader is called Events. And it works like many other PDF readers that you may have used. 
In this case, I'm reading a document on Darktable, which um, explains a program you can get under Linux for managing photos. And of course, you can do quite a bit with PDFs under uh, Fedora Linux. And then photographs as well. Here, I'm just going to open up a photograph, and a program called uh, image viewer opens up the um, the photograph and I can do other things here uh, with this program such as make very quick tweaks and modifications to a photo and so the file browser in um, in this environment is quite extensive and offers many possibilities I just finished installing the official version of Fedora Linux. So Fedora Workstation Edition is installed on my computer. And everything's great, beautiful environment, great technology, everything's wonderful. But I want a lot more from it. And so I'm going to customize this Fedora environment more to my preferences and in particular I'm going to add the cinnamon desktop to it cinnamon gives you a Windows 7 Windows 10 like experience in terms of the menus how you can access programs and how they're categorized and the fusion of the Windows 7 style menu structure with the industrial grade backbone of Linux gives you the perfect combination of usability, familiarity, friendliness, as well as great technology that's less susceptible to viruses, malwares, crashes, or the need for perpetual tune-ups. Since I am customizing Fedora Linux after I just installed it, and if you've followed everything so far, then you can stop at this point. Because you have an environment that's ready to go, ready to use. The tools that I'm going to use to customize it are tools anyone can use, especially if you do it the way that's demonstrated here. The tools that I'm going to use are the best way to go about doing the types of customizations that I'm going to do. Once I'm done with these customizations, I'm going to have the perfect desktop environment for everyday use. And if you'd like to customize your environment in the same way, follow along and everything will be great because by the end of it you'll have an environment that is the perfect fusion of navigation in terms of menu structure, accessing files and pulling up programs but also having more features in terms of programs that you can install and things that you can do with media, video and files. The Cinnamon Desktop is a desktop that will provide more functionality in terms of usability. And the most direct way to get there is through the terminal. And with the terminal, I will enter a very simple statement that will get the process rolling. And what I want to do first is make sure I have the most up-to-date information about the Cinnamon desktop downloaded to the computer. So I'm going to type sudo dnf 
make cash and this is what it looks like and so sudo dnf make cash and press enter and then prompt it for a password so I enter a password and you can also backspace if you forget uh, if you're not sure the password you entered is correct but enter the password press enter and the latest information for Fedora is downloaded the next step is to um, type reset reset clears the screen so I'm not distracted and I'm going to type sudo dnf group install cinnamon desktop and I will put cinnamon desktop in double quotes then I will press enter to allow the uh, process to kick off and it will identify all the pieces for cinnamon desktop at the very bottom I just type the little letter Y small Y and with small Y I press enter and the system does the rest it downloads all the pieces for the cinnamon desktop and as it's downloading everything um, it creates a cache of items to to um, to install and then um, it starts installing everything right so each of the individual packages that make up cinnamon and all the dependencies those items are automatically selected and set up configured to their default levels and once this process is done all I have to do is type the word exit E X I T press enter and everything is set for me to restart into the cinnamon desktop when you first reboot after installing cinnamon you have the little gear box gear icon by the sign in button you click that and then you're able to select cinnamon right and then once you do that you enter your password press enter and now your desktop is completely different right so we have a fresh desktop with the cinnamon layout looks kind of like Windows 7 or Windows 10 in terms of the menu in the lower um, left hand corner so I open up Software Center because that shows you how the icons and the colors differ from the way it was in the GNOME uh, desktop so <clears throat> by default we have kind of a a dark mode with a brown tint so I I right click on the taskbar at the bottom right and choose themes here I can choose a different theme right and with this theme I'm able to um, change how everything looks so here I've made a modification just with one click and now the software center looks a little different I'm also going to change the background image right so uh, there are few more background uh, images that I can get and I'm going to select through a few of them um, until I find one that you know is, is quite suitable and of course you can also choose a picture right and if you do you know that picture is going to stay as your background but you can uh, choose a few of the other art selections that's included with the cinnamon desktop here I'm going to choose um, a cherry blossom um, motif and it looks pretty nice, it's relaxing, it's restive. This is the file browser and the file browser looks similar to it to the way it did under GNOME. Um, here I'm going to select the details view 
I have more colorful icons and these icons basically um, make the functionality more apparent and you'll see that my uh, menu in the lower uh, left hand corner has uh, changed just a little bit to correspond to the theme that I chose. LibreOffice Writer, the alternative to Microsoft Word, likewise um, has been affected by the theme changes. So the theme changes are comprehensive and across the board. And so uh, the iconography uh, changes in the programs and everything pretty much aligns to the way you're accustomed to if you've used Microsoft Windows and so here I'm going to create a document and then save it right and in LibreOffice you can save documents to the Word, Excel, or PowerPoint format right so if you wanted to send a document to someone and they see it in the format they're accustomed to you can do it that way here I decided to save it in the open document uh, format and the open document format means that I'm going to have a document format that's going to last pretty much forever. I also exported that document to a PDF, right? And so here we'll look at the PDF form. PDF is a good format if you want to exchange documents with others and you're not sure which program they have to open it. My customizations are complete and for me this is a great way to operate a computer and it's an environment that's going to last. If you have gone down this road and taken the same journey but find that there are programs you can't uh, install, things that you want to do but doesn't look like you can do, do them, then you need to look into RPM Fusion. RPMFusion.org is a website that hosts quite a bit of alternative software and they have the instructions under the configuration link of how you can set up RPM Fusion so that you can get even more software titles. As you can see with a little bit of time I have greatly customized my uh, cinnamon configuration so I got a nice login screen and then I have a new background image so I'm going to open up Firefox and I'm going to go to rpmfusion.org RPM Fusion basically is a website they have um, additional softwares that you can get for um, Fedora and through that I am able to um, link RPM Fusion into the software center and when you click on the configuration link at the top of the page on rpmfusion.org it shows you the instructions it shows you the instructions for tying RPM Fusion to the software center in fact, they make it so easy, you just click on a link, and you click uh, OK, and it's actually going to run through the software center itself to configure the software center. Here it's opened up in the software center. There's a green button that says Install. I click on that, and when I do, I enter the password for the system, right? And with that, everything is ready to rock and roll the RPM Fusion information is downloaded right and then once it's downloaded everything is good to go well not quite everything you have to close out and reboot and reopen um, the software center but once you do um, everything is good to go I hope you enjoyed this and as you can see I'm a huge fan of Fedora Linux 
and the Linux technology in general. I think it has been a great contribution and advancement in the computer industry. And it allows you to experience more the promise of computers in terms of being able to use computers the way you want, how you want it, without restrictions and limitations. And that is the best aspect of Fedora Linux, open source, and the entire free software movement. And if you embrace Fedora Linux today, I think you will find that um, you will be able to run your computers with greater freedom and versatility.